All right, folks, we're back with another one. I'm Coach Ty. This is Cheska. And now we're taking you through the bench press. We did a simplified video for the bench press, but now we're going to go into a whole lot more detail and get a lot more specific. So with the bench press, I would argue most of the work gets done before you've unracked the weight, before it's time to even begin the set. The setup is extremely important on a bench press and can make or break how much weight and how many reps you get while performing the movement. So I'm gonna have Jessica go ahead and take position and just lay back on the bench and then we're gonna work through the setup from toes all the way up to hands. So with your feet, you've got a few options. You can be flat footed or some people like to pull this leg all the way back and just be on their toes. Neither one of those is incorrect. You could do it whichever way. The one thing I would encourage you to do regardless is try to push your toes through the front of your shoes. Should generate a little tension through your quads. You're basically performing a leg extension. Um, when you do that, you generate a little more tension through your body. The more tension you can generate through the body, the more weight you're gonna be able to lift. So that's the lower body. And then if we move up to the lower back, uh, come a little bit closer in on this. So you see we've got a slight arch in the back. I can slide my hand right through there. We want a slight arch in the spine, but we don't want to over arch the spine. But imagine you're trying to point your ribs up toward the ceiling. That'll give you all the arch in your back that you need. And the other thing about arching your back is it makes it much easier for you to pull your shoulder blades back. You want to pull your shoulder blades back and dig your shoulder blades into the bench. That will pull your shoulder joint back, give you a little more room in that joint, and will keep your shoulders in a safer, stronger position while performing the movement. Okay, so that's lower body, that's the torso, now we're on to the arms. So your grip should be roughly one and a half times your shoulder width. If you're not exactly sure what that is, your shoulder width is both arms straight out in front of you and just move out a few inches. That's roughly the grip you want to take. Um, you also want to make sure that the bar is here on your hands. So let me show you what that looks like. So instead of grabbing up here, because that's going to flex your wrists all the way back, get the bar set very deeply into the palm of your hand. So you almost want to make a throw up the rock, right? Sorry, like so. That's gonna keep your wrist in a very, very strong position. If you get broken wrists, again, the amount of weight you're gonna be able to lift is gonna be limited by that. So set very deeply into the hand, toes through the front of the shoes, back is arched, shoulder blades are pulled back. We're super stable, now we're ready to start our first rep. I would always encourage you, if you're not sure about being able to lift the weight, ask for a lift off. If you're not sure how many reps you're gonna get, ask for a lift off. Don't be shy, ask someone in the gym. Most people are totally happy to help out. So I'm gonna give Cheska a lift off and we're gonna go on the count of three and then I'm gonna help lift the bar into position and then we'll start the set in one, two, three. All right, so now we're gonna initiate our first rep. So as you're bringing the bar down towards your sternum, you want the bar to land about there, yep and then press back up. So the bar is landing where your rib cage is. We don't wanna be any higher than nipple level, because then our elbows are gonna be a little too flared out and we're not getting the triceps involved enough to, again, lift the maximum amount of weight. We always wanna tap our sternum and then fully extend the elbows at the top. We don't wanna hyperextend the elbows, so if you can hyperextend your elbows, stop just short of that point. Very nice, and you're, imagine again, you're trying to tuck your elbows as you're going down. Don't let them flare out. Let's do two more, last two. We have these comically large five pound plates. They're great for filming videos, and done. And then slam the bar back on that flat part, like so, and then sink down. Uh, what is a good amount of bench press weight for you? I get this question quite a bit. How much weight should I be aiming to lift on my bench press? Like what's a good benchmark? What's a good goal to set? I would say your body weight. Once you get to a point where you can bench press your body weight, you're in a good spot. Um, and then from there, it's basically just the cream on top. So just aim for your body weight, or I would say 0.8 to one times your body weight on a bench press and consider yourself 
stronger at the bench press than the overwhelming majority of the human population, which is good. It's a good place to be. And then you're all done. That's the bench press. Thank you guys for listening as always. Thank you again, Jessica, for helping us out. And we'll see you with the next one. Deuces.